This is a production of PBS Charlotte. Just ahead on Carolina Impact. Their motto is changing lives one laptop at a time. We'll tell you how Charlotte area high school students are learning how to fix computers and also learning how to help others. How's the seven foot long touchscreen table helping kids get career ready? We'll show you how CMS has supercharged its program for helping high school students explore career pathways. And it's Bloomy Awards season as high school musical theater in our area takes center stage and we'll show you some of the terrific teens creating the magic. Carolina Impact starts right now. Carolina Impact covering the issues, people, and places that impact you. This is Carolina Impact. Good evening, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. There are programs teaching high school kids tech skills, programs that help teens find that first part-time job, and programs that provide computers for low-income families. Well, this is a story about one Charlotte area program that does all three, all at once. And it's technically not even our story. We discovered the program and the story behind the program at Geringer High School as part of the PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Labs project. When we saw their student video, we knew we wanted you to see it too. Jeff Sonier is at Geringer High School with more. Yeah, the Geringer story is part of this year's PBS NewsHour Student Reporting Lab project where local PBS stations like us work with local high school journalism classes like Geringer, which is where our story about their story begins. Maybe a different shot where Roberto Marrera, Ellie Pineda, and Michael Guerrero are all huddling around their yeah, class video. This is one of E2D labs located in Garrington High School. Showing fellow students learning to repair donated laptops. Students are trained to fix computers, replace hard drives, install software, and license computers. How did you find out about E2D? A friend recommended it to me and I looked into it and I applied. So right now, I'm just putting in the hard drive and I'm just closing the back and changing some other settings that we are required to do. Roberto and Michael from the video class are also members of E2D, which stands for Eliminating the Digital Divide. E2D brings in thousands of gently used laptops from local businesses, stacked up in E2D computer labs at Garinger and three other CMS high schools. Right now, he's licensing the computer and installing Windows. And after For the done, students, it's a learning experience, getting computer repair skills, and an earning experience, making 10 to 15 bucks an hour while working on the computers after school. And then the laptops they fix go to families who don't have a laptop because they can't afford one. Geringer is one of only four Charlotte high schools to take part in an exciting program that helps people who need computers the most get them for minimal cost. So when the students pitch the E2D program as the story for their video project, well, that's when PBS got interested. PBS. They just thought it was amazing that there was something right here on campus that was helping the digital divide throughout the entire community. One of the first things they needed to do was come up with a list of questions. What did they want to ask the different players in this story? In this scene, the Geringer students are interviewing E2D founder, Pat Millen. And it all started with a simple conversation that he had with his daughter. She came home one day and she said, Dad, every assignment we get at school presumes there's a computer at home. And I know there are a lot of kids at this middle school that don't have computers. Therefore, they can't do the work. If they can't do the work, they can't be successful in school. That's not fair. And then she said, what are we going to do about it? We have now gotten computers into 140 different schools within the Charlotte-Mecklenburg school system. Over 8,000 families now have laptops that were E2D laptops. And that means that at 3.2 people per household that use our computer, that means over 24,000 people every day use an E2D laptop. Every kid that we talk to that gets a computer says that the change for them is incredible. So fill out one under your name and one under his name. Okay. Okay. 
fourth grader Eros Barrera came with his sister to pick up his new E2D computer. E2D providing low-cost laptops to their entire neighborhood of these Habitat homes here in Cornelius. It's going to help you with your homework assignments. Well, they've been able to help them out with things like that, you know, financially. Well. So it's going to be a lot more reading assignments and things you need to be looking up and searching. It's going to be easier for you to do it at home. It feels good to give back to the community because we know that there's kids out there that really need a computer. It's like um, a privilege for me to be doing this. Like you said, it's a great learning experience, but at the end of the day, you are doing it to help the community, so it does feel good. And um, what you do realize that this is like helping out families, and they're getting the same opportunities that others have, and so it makes all the work worth it. So we gotta get the rest of the clips. So we have that clip. I think it's great. Um, I'm happy that they put it here. Um, it's giving the students an opportunity to learn something that you know they would never really have a chance to take um, and understand and be able to take it out into the real world if they really want to get a job working with computers. I think it's, I think it's a great opportunity. I'm glad that they put it here in Garinger, um, and I'm glad that you guys are here. So I think we're good? Yeah. Yeah, great kids here at Garinger, great video project, and a great program. You know, E2D's motto is changing lives, one laptop at a time. And we're not just talking about the lives of those kids and families who get the E2D computers, but also the lives of the kids here at Garinger and the other E2D high schools who are learning a skill, learning what it's like to have that first job, and learning how it feels to help others, one laptop at a time. Amy? Thanks so much, Jeff. E2D is currently working with four CMS high schools, Garinger, South Mech, North Mech, and Huff High Schools. You can get more information about the program and how to get one of those low-cost laptops on our website at pbscharlotte.org under our Carolina Impact page. Well, it's called Career Technical Education, or CTE. It's the way Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools is helping students get ready for the workforce straight out of high school or to get a leg up for college. Carolina Impact's B. Thompson tells us more. One, two, three, four, five, six, I always seven, eight, knew nine, I wanted to do something eight. in the healthcare field. That interest is enough to explore a career in healthcare in high school. Don't forget to introduce yourself to your patients. Hello, my name is Alexa. I will be your CNA today. This is Hawthorne Academy of Health Sciences. CMS has supercharged its career technical education, or CTE, program system-wide, and more students than ever before are taking advantage. I don't think we really appreciate or know that much about CNAs, but I believe if more exposure comes to it, people who are more invested in wanting to help people and take care of people, I believe that they'll start flocking more towards it. If you've ever been in a medical situation, you know the drill. Checking vital signs, being cared for by hospital staff, in particular nurses and CNAs, or certified nursing assistants. It's a booming job feel, one that has the Charlotte Mecklenburg school system taking a closer look at this career path. All right, can you open up wide? And how to give students a head start on their profession. The way um, the medical field is now, it's students being career ready, or ready to, for marketing, they have to go through the CNA program. They all want to be doctors, nurses, physical therapists, many things in the medical field, but they don't really understand patient care. Ready? Lift. All right, excellent. There is a national drive to get programs, public safety and allied health related, in the high schools. Hawthorne Academy is a CMS magnet school that provides those students a career path of courses in health sciences and public safety. The programs got underway last year. That path can lead to medical careers, and for many, it starts with certification as EMTs or CNAs. Here in North Carolina, you can take this class and actually take the state certification exam uh, when you're 17 and a half. The state will send you a certification card in the mail when you're 18, and you can take that card and go right to work. Workforce development is what the region demands, and CTE is CMS's answer. Giving high school graduates a pipeline into jobs or a competitive edge in college pursuits. I've actually um, been able to get the certifications for free and have some place to work while I'm in college. 
So at this table here, we can cut stuff, we can move the body around, we can see the insides of our organs and our muscles and our nerves. This seven foot long iPad like device is called the animatage table. With a touch screen, students can learn about the human body. It's the kind of equipment they have in colleges. It's really like a virtual anatomy class. That combined with real patient training means high school students are that much closer to their professional future. With this CNA, I was able to have long-term care with the patients and um, do one-on-one -on -one care personal. And then with EMT, it's more, um, I'm in there in the time that you need me most, like in the emergency setting. At first, I was not thinking of taking it, but then I remembered back when I was a kid and my mom was working as a CNA. And that really sparked an interest in me because I never really understood what she did as a CNA until right now. Let me go ahead and get your shoes on. Sansi, whose mother died when he was younger, has found a connection to her through his study of allied health sciences and an appreciation for the work done by those who care for others. In the healthcare community, they don't really okay. realize how much work they do, so becoming a CNA, I realized how much effort it takes to work that long, how much effort it takes to take care of someone, and to also while doing it when you have a smile, because you know, you have to be kind and you have to be empathetic to your patients too. Students interested in the program must go through the lottery to get into this magnet school, and instructors say it gives them an advantage when it comes to college and their course of study. The colleges want to know that they really are in. They, they're not thinking, I'm going to like this. They know they're going to like this because they've already done hours of doing patient care. For many students, there is no question. This is an opening that could change their lives and the lives of others. You see students that are engaged, uh, they're, they're goal-driven, uh, they come to class prepared, uh, they're, they're more than willing to get in and do the work, uh, and those are the students that we see that are successful. As times change, technology is coming in, but technology can't take care of patients. You're gonna always need someone hands-on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For Carolina Impact, I'm B. Thompson reporting. Thanks so much, B. CMS shares 19 different career pathways for students to consider, and administrators have now made CTE classes available at middle schools so younger students can be exposed to their options earlier. Well, it's that time of year when high schoolers start to get the itch, the itch for the school year to finally be over. It's also the time of year when high school musicals hit the stage. Months of preparation, all leading up to a weekend full of performances. Carolina Impact's Jason Terzes went to Huff High School in Cornelius, where he found an entire family getting ready for their moment in the spotlight. Uh, Fru Macera, Laser Wolf's fr first wife, Fru Macera, she was standing here a minute ago. Drew Colvin rehearses his lines, accent and all, for the lead role of Tevia in Huff High School's spring production of Fiddler on the Roof. Then, in the middle of the dream, in walks your grandmother Zaito, may she rest in peace. Grandmother Zaito? How does she look? Well, for a woman who is dead 30 years, she looked very good. It's the culmination of not only Drew's senior year, but of an education immersed in the arts. And I really enjoy making people laugh, and I just really enjoy performing in general, so this is a really good medium for that. It was in sixth grade when Drew first caught the acting bug. Since then, he's been in a slew of shows, wearing countless outfits and playing a variety of characters. So two plays a school year, so about, I've probably done at least 12 to 14 by now. He really understands the characters he's playing. He can play a wide range of characters, which is fun. But since your grandma came, she'll marry, what's his name? But this production will be different for Drew, as he'll have some familiar faces with him up on stage. The Huff High School productions are like so great and so much fun to watch, and especially to watch my brother do it for the musicals. And so definitely coming in, I already planned on wanting to do this. Youngest sister Mickey, a freshman, has a small role and is part of the show's dance ensemble. With Mickey on board, the spotlight then turned to another Colvin sister, Alex, a junior, who up until now had been doing cheerleading and lacrosse. But I knew once Mickey was coming in, it was going to be like the only opportunity I would have to get to perform with both of them. She just decided it would be fun. So Alex signed up joining the dance ensemble and playing a villager, which means there will be three kids from the same family, all on stage, all at the same time. I think it's a really cool experience to have all three of us 
it's a cool bonding experience for sure. I don't remember having three children from the same family all in one show at the same time. Call it the Colvin trifecta. The first time all three will be on stage together since appearing in Peter Pan as part of a summer camp during elementary school. My parents are super happy to have all three of us in it. Very excited to see my three kids to get to have that experience. It'll be pretty emotional. I think the best part is knowing this is like our last time all three together, so that's what makes it special. Turns out there's a fourth Colvin kid who's also into performing arts, older sister Ariana, who's now in LA working as a production coordinator. So where they all get their inspiration and acting chops from? Well, that's an easy one. Look no further than mom and dad, who were both big time performers back in their day. My first play was I was the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland when I was eight years old. Did things like Bye Bye Birdie and a couple other productions. When people laughed and, and applauded for that, it gets you hooked. There's nothing like getting up on a stage and looking out into an audience or a dark audience and then hearing applause when you're done. It's just, it's an adrenaline rush kind of unequal to anything else. Got into high school and theater was my big thing. I did sports, I did soccer, things like that, but theater was what I was most known for and ended up being the president of the drama club. And I think because Rich and I both grew up doing productions, um, that it was just common sense that just like you join Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts, you go out for choir, or you go out for theater. Having experienced actors at home is a big bonus, as father can give son pointers and advice. He's always wanted to do Fiddler on the Roof, so um, he, he, he's working with me on my role to kind of help me develop it and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's one of the, I would say the biggest, most ironic and wonderful joys of being a parent is watching your kids do everything better than you. The Colvins want their kids to enjoy the experience, have fun, but also give it everything they have. It's certainly not like you have to get the lead, go for the lead, but it's if you get the part where you say two lines, if it should be the best two lines you have ever delivered. Like, go all in. I guess we're just expected to be kind of the, the go-getters. And we, we, when we do stuff, we, we really try to do stuff 110%. And that's kind of a, an expectation of our name. And I think it's a really cool thing to have. When he says we're a family of go-getters, probably more accurately, we're a, a family of ham bones. And never was that more evident than in a recent rehearsal, where Mickey, Drew, and Alex busted out an impromptu dance number. <laughs> The Colvins understand that this is a moment in time, a moment they won't ever experience again, so they want to be sure to soak it all in. There's four shows, and I think I feel like we've bought about 15 tickets for each show. We have a lot of family and friends coming in from out of town, because I said if anybody was thinking about coming for graduation, come enjoy the fact that all three kids are going to be in a production together. All three of them, just fantastic kids and very good at everything they do in school, but it just takes my breath away just watching them up there. So it's going to be, I'll probably have tears from the very opening act. It will most certainly be an experience this theater family will never forget. For Carolina Impact, I'm Jason Terzis reporting. Thank you so much, Jason. It's so great to see that entire family of siblings work together on that show. Well, next up, I have a wonderful guest joining me in the studio. It is Jay Everett from the Wells Fargo Foundation, and we're so excited to have you here to talk about one Thank of my you. favorite times of the year. It's Bloomy Awards season, mm -hmm. and you folks believed in this project when it was just an idea. Now we're in the eighth year. Yeah. How has it lived up to your expectations? Well, I would really say it's exceeded our expectations. As a foundation investor in the community, when a program is new, you, you don't really have any outputs or outcomes to measure. So you're really kind of going on the instinct that the idea is a good idea, that the program can have strong benefits. And so eight years beyond our initial investment in the program, we're really blown away because um, we understand the student impact is, is very strong. We get to recognize outstanding teachers that are involved with high school musical theater in the region. And we also see how the community really kind of coalesces around this program and it's everything from sellout that night of the actual production to people tuning in to watch the WTVI broadcast of the of the award so we couldn't be more pleased with the investment. What benefits do you see for the young people involved beyond just the recognition of their hard work in theater? We do some research with our foundation's work on before we make investments and we know that students that participate in high school musical theater programs actually tend to perform better on standardized tests that get you into college. They tend to have higher rates of acceptance into college 
perform better academically. And so there is this connection between the performing arts and studying it and the, the discipline that's required to do it well and broader academic performance and, and even more success within life. So I, I think that there are students that get to participate in this program not only have a chance to showcase their talents as a team and as individuals, but we know that they are also investing their time in something that's uh, an investment in their future. So you talk about those talents, mm -hmm. and the talent here in Charlotte has done Amazing. extremely well on a national level at what's called the Jimmy Awards nationally right. in New York City. What do you think that says about our regional awards? I, I just think the fact that students from this region that are elevated to participate at that national level in New York City um, with the, the Jimmy Awards, um, it just shows the amount of talent we have here in this market. I think it says a lot about the teachers and educators that are in the school that are motivating those students every day. I think it says a lot about kind of family support for the arts and supporting children that are involved in high school musical theater. And, and really, at the end of the day, you know, athletics are extremely important and academics are extremely important. And within academics, both the, the arts and the sciences are critical. And so I also think it just shows that, you know, when you invest in education systems, in programs that support the arts, you know, there really is a broader investment in academic performance and these, these individual students' performance. And we've just had some exceptional students go on to the national level and, and win at the national level with awards. Um, Amina Fay a couple of years ago, Renee Rapp this past year, both selected as Best Actress. Eva Noblezada I was, was like, a, we can't forget about yeah, her. Yeah, she's a semifinalist the, the year that she went, just about five years ago maybe. And from that experience, there was a talent scout in the audience and he, she picked her out and suggested that she perform on West End in London in Miss Saigon and she got the role. And she's been on Broadway and she was nominated for a Tony Award. So, so um, great example of local talent just accelerating to that national level. And you step up also, Wells Fargo, the foundation supports the National Jimmy Awards too. Uh, why? Well, what people need to realize is that there are local competitions just like the Blumenthal Performing Arts Program here, the Bloomies, all over the country. And so there are probably 30 different markets where these students come from across the country. And when they go to this national level experience at the Jimmy Awards in New York City, they get a full week intensive experience in Broadway with educators, um, musicians, Broadway stars. Um, they get to see what the industry is really about. And, and so we love that investment. And, but we also know that behind every great student performance, there's a teacher and an educator who's involved in motivating them and making a real difference. And so we sponsor the National Inspiring Teacher Awards at the Jimmy Awards each year. And that's a way for us to recognize that connection between the teaching component and the actual experience that these students have. Jay Everett, Wells Fargo Foundation, we're so grateful for all the investments you make in our community Thank to you. allow young people and everyone to thrive. It's Thank great you. to partner with you on the Bloomy Awards. Thank, Thank you. you. You can watch the Bloomy Awards only on PBS Charlotte, Tuesday night, May 28th at 8 p.m. Please tune in. These young people are extraordinary. Well, we move on to inspiration of a different kind now. There's a judge in Mecklenburg County with an amazing story. She was just 10 years old when she immigrated to this country from Poland. Carolina Impact's Tanisha Johnson has more on the immigrant who beat the odds to make her dreams come true. Although just a few months in office, Mecklenburg County District Court Judge Paulina Havelka is at ease presiding in her courtroom. She delivers justice for families and those involved in domestic violence cases. To serve here in this way was her dream. And it took 20 years of hard work but it was worth every minute of it. And I'm asking for your vote for district court judge in Mecklenburg County on the- Havelka ran for office three times before she succeeded. She knew she wanted to make a difference from the bench, so she didn't give up. But on the day she was sworn in- I couldn't even mutter any words out of my mouth that day. I was so emotional. Emotional because the long road to get here was tough. Havelka was born in Poland, a country where justice and peace didn't exist. Living in a war-torn country meant food shortages, fear of another invasion, and the absence of free speech and personal freedom. With hopes of a new life and reconnecting with her father, Havelka and her mother immigrated to the United States when she was just 10 years old. It was their chance to start over, but it wouldn't be easy. Everything was new for me, you know, and then language. I didn't speak English. 
And then to overcome the challenge of English being a second language was, I can't even begin to tell you how many tears I cried. That was only the beginning as living in Queens, New York came with its own challenges, bullying to be exact. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you the stories from New York City walking to school and, you know, waiting for three o'clock because somebody wants to jump me um, just because I was different and, you know, I didn't speak English. Once the pair moved to Charlotte, Havelka says she kept making life mistakes, which she calls left turns, like cutting class and smoking on school grounds. When she did graduate, she graduated at the bottom of her class. I was ranked 49th out of 50. And I will admit that to PBS for one reason and one reason only. Don't ever underestimate someone. Uh, don't ever put a number beside them um, because that number does not define you. And she didn't allow it to define her, but she did need to learn in her own time. In fact, after high school, Havelka didn't have grand plans for college or work. But with pressure from her mother, she worked at her mother's daycare and took classes at Central Piedmont Community College. But after she had her first child, Robert, life changed too many left turns, you know? And then next thing I know, uh, Robert came and my GPA went from a 2.9 to a 3.6, and everything became clearer. I needed to do more. More meant becoming a clerk in criminal court. I fell in love with it. But when she told her mother she wanted to go to law school. Honey, my heart stops. I was like, I mean, I, I, I was dreaming dreaming about something, but it was way behind my expectation, you know. Havelka says she felt she was meant to be a part of something bigger than herself. And bigger it was, she would go on to earn her law degree, run her own practice, and serve in the public defender's office. Well, inspiration for me um, in becoming a lawyer, and then uh, ultimately, truthfully, all along, I hoped that I would one day preside over court in Mecklenburg County was when I was a clerk. Havelka says she watched every judge closely. It was interesting to see the personality come out in every judge, in every courtroom, and how they did things. Um, but more importantly, how they touched people, and how sometimes compassion took you a long way, and then how sometimes tough love took you a long way. Today, she shares the same lessons with those who come into her courtroom. She shows compassion, as well as tough love, and tries to build up those who stand before her. And now, her son Robert gets to watch her in action. I don't think I can describe how proud I am. It doesn't seem real. It really doesn't seem real. Um, and, and I don't know if it's just because it hasn't quite set in, but again, it kind of goes with that mom sort of thing, right, you know? The 25-year-old is following in his mom's footsteps and plans to go to law school. He says his mom's journey has inspired him to not give up on his own dreams. I think it goes without saying that I have a tremendous amount of support. Um, so that lesson is just I myself, right, need to sort of keep that drive going. You know, as long as I keep pushing, there are people that are willing to help whenever I lose strength. In the meantime, Havelka is grateful that her mother had the courage to move halfway around the world. Judge Havelka knows firsthand about the hardships in life, but she also knows that anyone is capable of beating the odds and achieving their dreams. And that hope will continue. One case, one judge, and one courtroom at a time. For Carolina Impact, I'm Tanisha Johnson reporting. Thanks so much, Tanisha. We'd like to wish you all the best as this, unfortunately, is your last story on Carolina Impact. You are leaving us to join the team at a television station in Columbus, Ohio. We will truly miss you and your great stories. Well, we want to say hello and recognize some great students from Cox Mill High School and J.M. Robinson High School. They were in our studio audience today for this recording, and they are off to great places to do extraordinary things in life. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have to share with you this evening, but we always appreciate your time. And we look forward to seeing you back here again next time on Carolina Impact. Good night, my friends. A production of PBS Charlotte.